Not mad at having Mike Singer on, formerly of the Denver Post, but he has tapped into the Denver Nuggets, and he is covering every single game. He'll be a he'll be at Ball Arena tonight when the seven one Nuggets, the defending champs, take on a chance from two seasons ago. The Golden State Warriors, who of course are off to a six and two start, five one on a the road. They went in, they didn't win their fifth road game last year, I believe, until January sixteenth. They've got five road wins so far this season. Don't ask me when they won their sixth row game because I'd have to look that up. But let's bring in Mike Singer. Um, he's here on the Morning Roast, and we love having him on. Mike, good morning, man. How you doing? I'm great, man. I appreciate you guys having me on. Anytime, man. You you give us some great insights, especially when it comes to the Denver Nuggets. And you know the NBA very, very well. We were talking about Jokic and how good he's been. And he's I think he's picked up his game since the championship. A lot of people were worried about him coming off a short break, winning the championship. But he looks as good as ever so far to start the season, Mike. The dude is unbelievable. I think that there was some question, is there a championship hangover? Is this dude hungry? Um, but the thing that people don't realize about him is that he's not motivated by external factors. His, his motivation comes internally. And just because he's already won one does not mean this dude's satisfied. Like, he is hungry. He is trying to be greedy. And, like, the Nuggets are throwing around the D word. They're throwing around the word you guys, the, the, the Warriors are accustomed to using with the dynasty. And it's like, the reason why they feel like they can even, you know, toss around that word so flippantly is because Joker is so special. Mm. And, it, and, I mean, I agree with you. I think he's gotten better. Um, and I think, most importantly, he's engaged to start the season, which you can't always say. And it's even more impressive coming off the championship. Right? I, 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 I hate to do this to you. I know it's the first time I'm on. The dynasty words, you won one ring. The D word, I, come on. One sure. like one ring, we're throwing the dynasty word around. I'm sorry, it triggers me. For sure, and it, and it should trigger you because you guys have done it, and the Nuggets have come nowhere near doing it. I'm saying what the Nuggets have said, not what I have said. Yeah. Michael Malone, Calvin Booth, they have used the D word openly. They have, and they're and and I, and. and, and but they're ju- they feel justified in doing that because they recognize this window that Joker's put them in. Can we get to the second leg of the ladder before we start talking about what's on the roof? I mean, come uh, on here. All right, you follow this team inside and out. We've been praising you for 11 minutes, All right, the team and how well-built they are. What's their fatal flaw? What what is the what? Where are the cracks on this team? Because they feel like they're in their prime. They do. Yeah, I mean— like there's you guys are just talking about a starting unit. Like starting unit is is nails. They're not they're not going anywhere and they're locked up for a year or two more at, at minimum. Um in their rotation right now, and granted I am not acknowledging Jamal Murray's injury, he's gonna be out a few well, more games. We got some breaking um, news real quick, uh Mike. We got some breaking news. Gary Payton the second is ill. He's questionable for today. And Draymond Green is listed as out due to personal reasons. So no Draymond tonight. Right. No Draymond tonight. I'd, I'd actually heard that, but I had to sit on it. Um, yeah. And um, so, you know, when we're talking about their fatal flaw, what is it? It's that they're starting such young guys with also championship aspirations. So you have Christian Brown. He's a second-year guy. You're starting Peyton Watson, who was in the G League last year. Not starting. You're, you're, he's in the rotation. Second-year guy, Peyton Watson. Julian Strother is now coming off the bench and is giving you 21 off the bench and, and gunning from three. Like, those are three, and Colin Gillespie is now playing their backup one while Jamal Murray's out. So you have three to four guys with one to two years of experience gunning for a championship. Last year, replace those young guys with Jeff Green and Bruce Brown, and now you can you can talk about dealing with one young guy, but now you have a lot of variability with three or four guys. And, and that's what this regular season is for, is getting those young guys acclimated, getting their legs under them so that when the playoffs hit, you know, Michael Malone can trust those guys. Hey, I, I understand what you're saying, Mike Singer, when it comes to Mike Malone, because two minutes after he got handed at Larry O'Brien trophy, he was talking about going back-to-back. So I'm not mad at that mentality, keeping these guys engaged. Hey, you can do what you do when you're a champ. Speaking of which, uh, Jokic, we talked about him. No Jamal Murray tonight. Uh, but Aaron Gordon, I think, buying into his role. And we love Aaron Gordon out here. He's from San Jose. Watched him a ton right. in high school. Watched him at the Pro-Am. He's a very good kid, super athletic. What did it take for him to buy into his role last season with the Denver Nuggets? So I just want to zoom out for two seconds. This dude was the number four pick. Orlando Magic comes in with all these high expectations, super high flyer. Is he going to be you know, the lead playmaker, the lead score the lead this and that lead defender for the magic that's a lot to put on a guy 
And so when you talk about fit and you talk about ideal fit, it's hard to ask of that, of a, of a high lottery pick to do all those things. But when you get traded to Denver and you fit into a role, he's probably the fourth option, maybe the fifth, probably the fourth or fifth option in the Nuggets offense. But, you know, he takes their, he, he defensively protects Joker in the front court. Um, he plays well off Joker. He moves well, um, hits the glass. He does all those things that he, that they, that they didn't necessarily need him to do in Orlando because they needed him to do everything else. He does all these things where he just settles into his role and fits in because every other hole is filled because of all the talent that they have around him. So that takes a level of sacrifice. That takes a level of buy-in. That takes a level of acceptance that who I was as a basketball player is not who I ultimately will be as a basketball player when the situation fits perfectly around me. Yeah, well, we've all been rooting for him and seeing him accept and, and uh, adapt to the role has been it's been really cool. And it really was. I mean, people are really rooting for that kid and have, have been rooting for that kid. And now he's obviously a grown man. So good for him. The, the Jokic brothers, man, the, N- Nikola Jokic and his brothers, they fascinate the hell out of me. Give me something about them, because like obviously all the, the stuff that was made about Jokic not celebrating a championship. I think we made way too much of that. Like, are they still traveling with the team? The brothers? They, they don't travel with the team, but there are certain games that they go to, but you can find them at every single home game. They're sitting there, center court. They'll be there tonight. I guarantee it. They, like, the thing I can tell you about the brothers yeah. is that they – I can't tell you how much investment they have in their younger brother. <laughs> um, they've sacrificed uh, for him. They have paved the way for him. They showed him what not to do, and they protected him. Um, in, in so many different ways, and like when you when you really look at his like family unit, it is a unit. The Nuggets did not just draft Joker; they drafted his whole family, and obviously, it's become <laughs> integral to to who they are as a franchise. Like they, the picture with uh, here's here's one you'll appreciate. So you, I'm sure you saw the picture of uh, Joker's brothers like picking up Malone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's it's great. Yep. It's great. So Malone. Um, wants that and, and, and asks for that picture to be framed in his office. Wow. That's um, great. And that's how much he appreciates um, kind of the family aspect <laughs> of uh, uh, of the Jokers. I, I do love the Jokic brothers, man. Dude, their you Twitter accounts must them. follow. Yeah, they, you do not mess with them. Mike Sinker did confirm. He's like, yes, it's the, Yoke, the Jokic brothers on Twitter looking for the Morris twins. And the Morris twins have not been heard of since that incident. That was uh, a vicious <laughs> That was a vicious that, that's, the, that's the biggest news I ever broke. And I, was sitting, I had COVID at the time. <laughs> I was sitting in quarantine, and I get a text from Joker's brother. Hey, uh, Mike. This is our account. Can you please share this? I said, I said are you no freaking way. kidding me? I That's said, amazing. I said, yes, Rahinia, uh, I can share it. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, and if you don't share it, you know they're going to be knocking what, at the door what, here. What do they do for fun? Yeah, like, what do no, they do? I want to know more about the they, they wear the jerseys yeah, and they wear the short sleeve shirts. They wear the Adidas they, sweatsuits. Right. Yeah. They, 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 they look like Bob. They look like Bob figures. Yeah. Tell me what they're like away from the the arena. Just the whole they, family. Uh, I mean, Strahinia, he, he works out a ton. He, I mean, he goes to the gym. Uh, shockingly, he can toss some weights around. Um, uh, Nemanja, I mean, he, uh, you know, I, I think he practices MMA he, and like, which is also shocking. Um, and, and, I mean, these dudes are, they're characters, but they've also, they groomed Nicola. This yeah. is, it's not like how competitive he is, how tough he is. It's not a surprise. Like, look at the full context. These dudes, and, and they're a lot older than him, so like they they were tough on their younger brother, um, and, and they messed with him. And and look what it yielded. It yielded a generational type player um, who who's yeah. not scared of anybody. He looks at everybody and says, "You're not better than me. We're good here." Wow, wow. Uh, last one for you, Mike, and we appreciate the time today. Well, I heard rumblings that maybe the Nuggets, when they were looking at the Warriors Lakers series, that they would have preferred to play the Lakers. And obviously, they swept the Lakers in the Western Conference Finals. How would that match have gone? Were the Nuggets a little weary of the Warriors in the Western Conference Finals last season? Did, was there a little fear towards that because of the championship pedigree? I mean, I think that you could definitely look at the prior year and, and just say, hey, we gave, them, we gave them a fight in five games. Um, and we put up something while we were very undermanned. So, I really don't think they were scared of anybody. Right. Um, I do think that I, I don't really know who matches up better. I mean, the Lakers are big in the front court, right. 
but a lot of teams are now playing Joker with a smaller guy on him. So Draymond and Looney probably would have handled him. Like I, I don't, I, I do think that just the history, um, maybe there, there's a little bit like, hey, they got us last year. Maybe we can get them this year. But I don't think that they're scared of anybody. I don't think they have reason to be scared of anybody. And you know, I think that they have a very healthy respect for who the Warriors are, and I don't think by any means that they think just last year was any kind of aberration. Like, the Warriors are still here. They're still relatively healthy, um, and I think that they, you know, there's a very good chance tonight could preview the Western Conference Finals. Oh, uh, we shall see. Unfortunately, some injuries here. Jamal Murray out with right hamstring tightness. Uh, we, we No timetable on him. It's and, of course, so on the other side, uh, Gary Payton is second questionable due to a sickness and Draymond Green out due to personal reasons. Maybe Hazel. I know Hazel's his uh, wife was walking around Prego uh, at Chaser, so maybe maybe baby's coming. We'll see about well, this that. Well, it's a but, tough one. I mean, yeah. you know, the startup Warriors against the dynastic Nuggets. Oh, I don't I know. See, oh, here you go. I see what I got to deal with, Mike, over here. I love it. Hey, hey, Bonte. By the way, a, a little birdie told me you killed the uh, you killed the commissioner Adam Silver press conference. So way to go! Oh, I appreciate that. I well, I I just told Joe Lake, man, you're paying so much luxury tax. You can't afford Amat Rashad or Malika Andrews. You had to scrape at the bottom of the barrel, man. They were desperate. Uh, they were desperate. Man. So this, I was hanging all my thread up there. The uh, the startup Bonte Hill against the exactly. dynastic Amara exactly. Shad. Exactly. <laughs> what now that <laughs> chest kiss, my friend. Oh, uh, Mike Singer, you're the man. I can't wait to see you again, Good brother. Stuff, Keep killing it out there in Denver. I love it. All right, we'll talk soon, guys. Yeah, tell Absolutely. Mike Malone to dial it down. You know, maybe wait a second <laughs> before we start stunning like we're Kirk Cousins hey, with our shirt hey, off in the airplane. Do-